internet is about Nigeria and Nigerians. Welcome to another episode of Inside the Senate, a program dedicated to keeping you updated on proceedings of the Senate Chamber of the National Assembly and its esteemed lawmakers. I am your host, Hadiza Bayeru Aliu. Our program for this week is a continuation of the review of significant events and engagements that took place in the first quarter of 2024. This will feature activities from the Senate committee rooms within that period. We shall also bring back some courtesy calls made to the Senate President during that period. Stay tuned as we look into these topics right after this short break. Promote the unity, happiness and prosperity of Nigeria. The Defense Industries Corporation of Nigeria Act Repeal and Reenactment Bill 2023. I made this act should be supported by all. There are issues that we must use this opportunity to critically address. We accord this motion the urgency and the necessity it requires. I rise the second motion. The eyes have it. Welcome back. Senate President Gotu Lakpaibu has called on the Inspector General of Police, Kaide Betoku, to identify and remove corrupt and bad officers in the force. Senator Akpaibu made the call at the maiden edition of the Nigerian Police Awards and Commendation Ceremony held on Monday, 15th April 2024 in Abuja. The Senate President urged the first to find a lasting solution to issues involving corrupt officers and members of the public. According to him, the ever-evolving landscape of crime and the increasing sophistication of criminal gangs pose significant obstacles. He added that as the good officers of the force are being honored, the bad ones should be flushed out because a chain is as strong as the weakest link. While congratulating the awardees, the Senate President pledged the full support of the National Assembly for better policing in Nigeria. He stated that his leadership will make legislative policies that will promote the welfare of policing in Nigeria as it has recognized the importance of a well-equipped and motivated police force in ensuring the security and well-being of Nigerian citizens. And now to our review of significant events and engagements that took place in the first quarter of 2024. We are looking at the activities of Senate committees and how they attended to issues on the economy, security, education, among others. Our next report, as compiled in our studio, focuses on a detailed examination of some of those interactions held within the Senate committee rooms. Let's have that report. The Senate Committee on Finance on Wednesday, 6 February 2024, hosted the Minister of Finance, Wale Edun, at the National Assembly Complex to investigate the remittance of internally generated revenue by MDAs and evidence of payment of 1% stamp duty into the Consolidated Revenue Fund account from 2020 to 2023. The meeting was led by Chairman of the Committee, Senator Sani Musa. Uh, Huston came here and did mention that the country lost about 38 of this internally generated revenue <coughs> from strong specific waivers that were given which we are not supposed to do. We know that there are some items in the tariff which have zero tariff, so zero duty. So we don't count them as part of those laws. And uh, I think I recall the distinguished senator Alero asked that question so that the custom order can clarify. And they clarified that there was a loss of 3.8 million. Honorable Minister, looking at that figure, which I would say constitutes close to about 20-30% uh, uh, of uh, the, the collection, the total collection of them, what are we doing about that? We are going to do away with the existing system. It is automated which means that you are applied for your duty waiver and it's processed online and then sent to customs and they see that they don't have to charge it. That system is what I have call, if I might use some Latin, is an ex-ante system. You get it up front. The same system can be rejected 
even sir, without changing the law. If you want duty waiver, pay your duty when we are clear that you have brought in a goods you say you are going to bring in, you automatically get it back. You can do it. We have the technology, we have the payment system. Nigeria is leading the world in financial technology and payments. And so that is the commitment. I would like you to share your thoughts and uh, give a summary of uh, some of the key items of your economic agenda and uh, let us know uh, how and when things may turn for the better. In terms of food security, I did my previous position as a coordinator of the economy. I did meet the whole agricultural sector just before the dry season farming, the dry farming season to come. Security was there, large farmers were there, small farmers, seed providers, input providers, machinery, uh, people leasing machinery. They were all there. And we identified what the blockages were. No fertilizer has been provided, grains have been provided. And at the time, I asked that genuinely, what did they feel? And they said we'll have a good dry season harvest. As you know, that harvest is scheduled for April 15. And before then, Mr. President has released another 32,000 metric tons from the strategic reserves of grain, of food, and another 62,000 tons or 60,000 tons of rice going to be available just to tie us over that period. Another question responded to by the Coordinating Minister of the Economy was on the issue of inflation faced by the nation. The Minister had this to say. We talked about the inflation and you have helped to solve that. But where has it come from? It's come from eight years of just printing money. And the issue is that that money was not matched by productivity. And what happened was that for eight years, the, the, the weak were left to their own devices. It is the privileged few that took everything. That's the reality. So, that money supply has been sucked back out to balance the economy. New distinguished senators have helped. They have given us the mandate to raise seven trillion naira which we will do by sucking money from the market, using to pay back the central bank and give the government a balanced vote. In closing, Chairman of the committee pledged the support of the Senate to finding a lasting solution to the nation's worsening economic crisis. In another committee room, the Senate Committee on Ted Fund played host to leadership of Alex Ekweme Federal University Unduku Alike Ebony State on Wednesday, 29 February 2024 in the National Assembly Complex. The committee had invited the school's leadership after it received a petition from medical students of the school on exorbitant and multiple fees charged by the school. The prayers of the petitioners are that the committee look into the plight and cancel the debate degree of multiple payment of fees in one class by the clinical medical students of Alex Ikwame University in Dufay Aliki. Consider the exorbitant fees paid by the medical student should be brought down to an affordable rate. Some of the student representatives present at the meeting wore face marks in order to hide their identities so as to avoid victimization by the school authorities. Chidera Justice, a legal practitioner representing the student, spoke on their behalf. The school admitted its first set of medical students in 2017-2018 academic session. These students are currently in their 400 level, which ordinarily marks the 2020-2021 academic session. And distinguished senators, these students have all paid their fees for that particular academic session. 
The school also, in 2018-2019, admitted the second set of medical students who are also currently in their 400 level, making it two sets of 400 level students. That is 400 level A and 400 level B. According to Chidera Justice, the 400 level A and B medical students of the school were delayed by the school and yet have been forced to pay for the extra years spent. Distinguished senators, school fees for students are paid sectionally, not by exam, not by attending classes, but sectionally. That is, if you are moving to a next class, you have to pay for that class. As it stands now, this student has been in 400 level for two years, going to almost the third year. And now the school are saying that for that delay in two years, which is no fault of theirs, that they, should, that they are indebted by the memo released by the school, that the students are indebted to the school for two academic sessions. That's Another issue raised by the lawyer was the exorbitant nature of the school accommodation. He said that the medical students were overcharged for hostel accommodation that is not adequate to accommodate the entire 400 level students. In response, the Deputy Vice Chancellor of the University had this to say. Between 2020-2021 and 2022-2023, when the issue of payment came up, they hadn't paid anything. And they've been in, in the university. They've been receiving their trainings, like I said, outside the general problem of strike and COVID, nothing else affected the program. So they've been in, in, in the school for all that while. They've been receiving their trainings. We have no reason whatsoever to exploit the students hiding under the these guys of hostel fees. These are realities on ground. And it is that it is those realities that are informing our decision. Some members of the committee commented on the matter. When it comes to a situation where one room has to be occupied by multiple uh, students, they share the bill. That's what they do. So to say that you pay 300,000 naira a bed space is out of it in the first place. Completely. It's out of it. Nobody does that. No institution does that. If you like, you can walk, we can resume tomorrow on this matter. Go to the University of Abuja here. Go to Nile University here. Go to Blaze University here. It doesn't happen that way. If this was easy for them to resolve in Ebony, they wouldn't ride almost 10 hours journey from Ebony State to this place. Maybe you contributed to their flight. So they won't, and you know how much it is. They would better, they would prefer to pay the school fees and pay 250,000 naira for, flight is expensive now. So one, for the purpose that this matter has come here, I believe it is better we resolve it here. With that, the committee set up a subcommittee to look into resolving the matter, after which the matter was resolved behind closed doors. Still by the same committee, a public hearing was organized jointly with the House Committee on Student Loan, Scholarship and Higher Education Financing. Present at the event were the Deputy Senate President, Senator Barrow Gibrin, who represented the Senate President, Senator Gotswil Akabio, Ministers of Youth Development, representatives of National Association of Nigerian Students, NANS, among others. In his opening remarks, the Deputy Senate President lauded President Tinibu's effort to give access to funding for students. For the will and the passion he has shown in making sure that he creates a law, creates an institution that will facilitate access to funding for students who do not have the wherewithal to fund their educational goals. Um, they are shown uncommon, uncommon passion. And they are shown the political will to really work in line with global best practice. On his part, Chairman of the Committee, Senator Muntari Nduzi, stressed on the importance of the bill and education to the Nigerian economy. Because the challenges we are having in Nigeria on the educational sector, if this bill 
is properly deliberated by the critical stakeholders, both the academia, the financial institutions, and the students that are here present, I believe will have a value addition to this country. Other stakeholders also had opportunity to comment on the bill. We've noticed that the ministry was excluded from vital areas and it is recommended that the ministry be included as follows in our appeal to the joint committee. The Federal Ministry of Youth Development should be a member of the board. Uh, please refer to page 7 and 8 of the bill. The Federal Ministry of Youth Development is excluded only in the Ministry of Education and the Ministry of Finance uh, members, uh, uh, executive members of the committee. The interest of Nigeria students is highly represented in the board. But there's one important agency to whom think with our observation like JAMP is very key because they know the authenticity and how students validity, validity is all about. It is our own position. And I think we want a situation whereby the beneficiary of the student's law, those who made first class, should have what we call debt forgiveness. That was a report on some committees of the Senate and the assignments they undertook in the first quarter of 2024. Let's take a break here to open our Senate notebook. Don't go away. A public hearing is an interactive session organized by legislative committees on any subject matter for the purpose of sharing ideas, X-raying issues and resolving conflicts around the subject matter. The matter could be a proposed bill that has killed second reading or a motion referred to committees for more legislative actions. Interested members of the public along with the stakeholders may participate in the public hearings at the end of which reports are compiled by the committees and submitted to the Senate for necessary action. You are still watching Inside the Senate, your window to the activities of the Red Chamber at the National Assembly. Still on our review of activities from the first quarter of 2024, we shall now see some of the special guests received by the Senate, precisely the Office of the President of the Senate. These visits usually promote collaboration and forge valuable partnership with the Nigerian government through its legislative arm. On one of such visits held on Thursday, 16 February 2024, between the government, Saudi Arabia Parliamentary Friendship Group, and the Nigerian Senate, President of the Senate, Gautil Apabio, called on Saudi Arabia to assist Nigeria in the fight against insurgency and transborder terrorism through the sharing of intelligence. Security in any part of the world is insecurity everywhere in the world. So it was cooperate more in the areas of intelligence sharing to be able to bring the menace of insecurity to the minimum if it cannot be eliminated uh, in totality. Senator Akwaibio also called for stronger relationship between both nations. My colleagues and I just said we should highlight the need for Nigeria to leverage on this opportunity to intensify engagement for mutual benefit and, and that is through inviting you to do more investment in Nigeria, whether in the gas sector, whether in the uh, aviation, oil and gas, or any of the ventures, even in the ICT. Earlier in his speech, the leader of the delegation, Dr. Abdullah bin Hamad Al Salama, stated that their visit to Nigeria and particularly the Senate was aimed at further strengthening its age long bilateral relationship with Nigeria and looking for more ways of collaboration and assistance in the overall interest of the two countries. We have more than 24 either MIMO agreement or agreement that on a draft right now to be discussed between both parties, whether it is political or economic or financial or banking or justice or medical or environment or uh, energy uh, with respect to the province of Saudi Arabia as well. Similarly, on Wednesday, 14 February 2024, 
Senate President Gotula Pabiu pledged the support of the National Assembly to make the manufacturing industry in Nigeria flourish. The Senate President made the pledge when executives of the Manufacturers Association on Nigeria Man paid him a courtesy visit at the National Assembly complex. Senator Akbaibu noted that the plight of manufacturers in Nigeria is known especially due to the current economic situation in the country. The fluctuating regime of foreign, uh, of foreign exchange has affected you seriously. Well, because sometimes uh, some of you are engaged in manufacturing things that the aggregates are not uh, found in Nigeria. You have to bring bring the finished ones outside. You have to couple them in country. While commending manufacturers in Nigeria, Senator Akpabu pledged the support of the National Assembly to man in any way possible. Speaking earlier, President of Man Otumba Francis Mishioi, who led the delegation, mentioned that the visit was to discuss the current state of the manufacturing sector and collaborate on identifying areas where legislative support was crucial. We further hope that the relevant Senate committee will collaborate with MAN to identify critical gaps and areas where Nigeria lacks in readiness for gainful continental trade. Such collaborative efforts will undoubtedly mitigate potential negative impacts, address existing challenges, and provide support to offset the initial liberalization costs. Some items manufactured by members of the association were shown to the Senate President and other lawmakers present. Up next is our profile segment. Stay tuned as we present to you our Senator of the Week. Senator Einaya Hakot Abaribe is the current senator representing Abia South Senatorial District in the 10th Senate under the platform of the All Progressives Grand Alliance, ABGA. He was born on 1st March 1955. He earned his WASC from Government College Umwahia in 1974, after which he went on to the University of Benin, where he received a bachelor's degree in economics in 1979 and a master's degree in economics in 1982. After his academic pursuit, Senator Abaribi began a career in lecturing as a lecturer at Edo State University, where he worked from 1982 until 1985. In the year 1985, he became the area manager for Southern Nigeria at SCOA Nigeria, a position he held until 1991. In the same year, he became the Nikon Senior Manager for Investment and remained in the position until 1992. Later in 1993, he became the CEO of Integrated Mortgage Cooperation a position he held until the year 1995. In 1999, Senator Einaya Hakot Abaribi was elected to serve as Deputy Governor of Abia State to the then Governor Oji Uzo Kalu until his resignation and subsequent impeachment in March 2003. In the same 2003, he ran for governorship on the All Nigeria People's Party ANPP platform in 2003 but lost to his former boss, Senator Oji Uzo Kalu. In 2007, Senator Abaribi was elected to the Nigerian Senate on a People's Democratic Party PDP ticket. He was later to be re-elected in the same position to serve in the 8th, 9th and now 10th Senate. While in the Senate, he has served as Chairman Senate Committee on Media and Publicity in the 8th Senate and Minority Leader of the 9th Senate. Senator Abaribi currently serves as the Chairman of the Senate Committee on Power in the 10th Senate. His legislative agenda includes health and security, community development and human rights. On that note, we come to the end of this episode of Inside the Senate. If you missed this episode of the program, you can connect with us via our social media platforms showing on your screen to watch the episode. Join us again next week for a fresh edition of the program. Enjoy the rest of your day. Mm -hmm.